Hey there, thank you so much for joining me. And hey, do you ever feel guilty about taking time out to look after yourself? That you should be working on your business or helping your children with the homework, getting the laundry out, thinking about what we're going to have for dinner, all of those things on the to-do list so that your self-care, your health, maybe even your sleep keeps coming a distant last? Well, if that resonates at all with you, guess what? I'm about to help you to eliminate that guilt and to start putting together a really solid business case for putting your self-care first. You know, there's a reason why the world's most successful people have a really rock-solid self-care routine built into their daily living. And I'm going to share some of those reasons with you today. So, hey, look, if you're here live, take a moment now and drop live in the chat so that I know that you're there. And I mean, likewise, if you're watching this from the replay, just drop replay so that I know that you've um, taken it in and dropped by as well. And hey, if you know anyone who you feel this would benefit from this kind of conversation, then you're very welcome to sprinkle the love around the internet. Go ahead and share this with anyone you feel would benefit. So, um, here's the other thing as well. I know that we all have busy lives and look, if, if you're a normal human being, you're probably carrying a lot around in your head um, and I don't want to add to that. So if you'd like a copy uh, of my show notes from today's call, because we are going to cover a lot of juicy stuff, if you'd like a copy of the notes, just drop notes in the chat now and I'll make sure that I get you a copy of those. All good? So let's just have a look who's there. Super. So do make sure you comment notes and I'll get um, the show notes to you. Um, I'll just drop you a DM with the link to that after today's call. Cool. All right. So welcome, everybody. Um, one other thing just before we dive in, if we haven't met yet, just let me take a moment to introduce myself. I'm Anna McKinlay and I help entrepreneurial mums to um, really create strong self-care practices so that you've got the foundations in place to have a business and life that you love that serves you and your family so that you can thrive in business, so that you can thrive as a parent, so that you can thrive as a human being. And I do this through what I call my total well-being roadmap through online content like this and courses and coaching. So let's just see who's here, who we've got in the chat. Great to see you there, Kristen Allwine. Very, always very good to have you on one of these calls. And remember, if you're here live, just drop live in the chat as well so that I know that you're around. Well, without any further ado, let's dive into the juicy stuff, shall we? All right. So I know many of us, especially parents who are maybe working from home, maybe a bit entrepreneurial, even if you're in a job, we're juggling our business and our work. Work, being a parent, running the household, maybe caring for older parents, and often a bunch of other stuff, right? And it's a lot to keep track of. And it can be so overwhelming, particularly when we've got so much other stuff going on. Thanks so much for your comment there, Kristen. Especially when we've got so much other stuff going on in our lives, right? And in the external world, we can feel just lost and overwhelmed. And with all of that going on, what often happens is we just don't have the bandwidth, the time, the capacity, the energy to look after ourselves. Um, even just taking care of the basics like sleep often just falls off the bottom of that really busy, full, long to-do list. And there's always something else demanding our attention. So we can get stuck in, in that guilt trap of feeling guilty even just for taking a few minutes to sit down to rest or to do something for ourselves. I've seen so many different flavors of this um, in my clients that I've worked with over the years and I get it. I've been there too. That's why I'm so passionate about what I do now, about helping mums to create a balance that allows you to keep your cup full and still show up as the person, the parent, the entrepreneur that you want to be, having that impact that you want to have in the world. I know what it's like to go off the deep end of putting everything and everyone else first, and I know the cost of trying to serve from an empty cup. So I know also how difficult it can be to shift out of these patterns, but I'm here to tell you it can be done. So hey, if any of this resonates, drop yes in the chat. And I want to dive in because 
I know you know that your health and your self-care is important. That's not the conversation here. There is so much information out there about why we need to look after our health and, and all of the issues that people are having with health these days. You know, um, lots of kind of crisis speak about the importance of health. I don't, you don't need me to tell you that your health matters. The problem is not a shortage of information around this. The problem is actually the struggle to prioritize it and fit it in, um, especially when we have conflicting information on what we should be doing, right? It can just feel all too hard. So if you're struggling to prioritize your self-care, it's not because you don't have the information. It's not because there's something wrong with you either. Let's, let me be very clear about that. You may already have tried a number of methods and practices and tools and maybe found that they didn't stick or didn't quite work for you or that you just struggled to really sustain the changes. Um, if that's happened to you, again, it's not that there's anything wrong with you. It's about how we put these things in place in a way that works for you and that is sustainable. One of the biggest mistakes we often make, whether it's with our health or, or even with other goals, is that we get sucked into focusing on the method first, on what we feel we should do or need to do, without taking care of some of the fundamentals that actually underpin that. And one of the big ones, which is really my focus for you today, is around motivation. You see, there's a part of our mind, of our brain, that is always going to resist change. No matter how much we want to make a change, there'll be a part of us that is holding us back, that is resisting that. And if we are going to be able to get beyond it, we need to have a, a few things in place. And one of the keys there is motivation. We need a powerful motivation that helps us to keep sticking at it, it helps us to actually step in and do something that's outside of our normal patterns. Um, and you know, that's why my focus today is on why this is good for your business and your family, not just for you. Because something I've observed over the years is that most of us will do so much more for other people than we will for ourselves. Does that resonate? Drop a yes in the comments if it does, right? Most of us will do more for others than we will for ourselves. And especially we'll do more for our kids. And if we're passionate about our business, we'll do more for our business, more for our clients. And so we end up pulled in all directions trying to serve all of them and not ourselves. So if we're going to shift things around and actually start looking after our self-care, and believe me, there are many excellent reasons why your self-care is the foundation for everything else, the key piece is to get the motivation in place first, to get that powerful why, so that you can give yourself the strong permission slip to actually do some things for you, <laughs> all right? So that's really the main focus for today, um, because, you know, that putting our self-care last, it's such a deeply ingrained pattern for many of us, and in fact, in, in shared social values, that it can be really hard to shift beyond that. So powerful why. My intention today is to actually show you the really powerful business case for putting your self-care first. It's not selfish. It's a business investment. And in fact, it's also one of the best things you can do for your family as a parent as well. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But look, I'm, I don't want to leave you hanging. So I'm also going to share with you a simple five-step process that I use and that I've shared with many clients over the years to help you to make it easy to make those little shifts to your daily routines so that you can actually start showing yourself some care and some love and some nurturing each day so that you can show up as the human being you want to be. How does that sound? All good? All right. So here's what we're going to cover. So that we're on the same page, I just want to talk briefly about what is self-care. And um, we'll share five powerful ways that your self-care directly benefits your business as well as your family. And as I said, I'll share with you that five-step formula. I also want to share with you a personal story to really underpin that when I'm saying this is a business case, you can attach a dollar value to it. You really can, because when you start doing this, it will show up in the results you get in your business. Um, and you will find that, that that happens without you having to put more time in, in fact, even less time. So 
first, let's talk just a little bit about what is self-care. Now, I'd actually like to invite you to think about this question of what does self-care mean to you? So feel free to drop your thoughts on that in the comments. What does self-care mean to you? I mean, we all have a slightly different definition. I'll share mine with you right now. So what I think of as self-care is firstly, I invite us all to think more broadly about it because often we get stuck into thinking that self-care is about those, those basics that we hear about all the time. Making sure we exercise, making sure we eat well, making sure we get enough sleep. And yes, of course, those are important. But actually, if we broaden the way we think about it, there are many, many things that we can do to boost our self-care. And if we allow ourselves to open our minds and think widely about what self-care is, then <laughs> We allow it actually to be easier for ourselves to actually find the routines, the practices, the habits that will nurture and work for you, you, the unique human that you are and within your unique lifestyle, right? So my definition of self-care, it's really simple. It's showing care for yourself. And there's several dimensions to that um, from my perspective. Yes, it's about showing care for our physical body. But it's also about showing care for our emotional self, our mental self, and what I think of as our energetic self. So you may think of that as your intuitive self, your subconscious, your higher self. Many of us, we've got many different words for that part of ourselves. So there are a number of dimensions to self-care, and there are many ways that we can show care to ourselves. You know, I just, before this call, brainstorm just a few as a sample, and I'm not sharing this to overwhelm you. I'm sharing this so that you can go, actually, wow, there's a lot of options here. <laughs> so here's just some examples. I'm just eating nourishing food, hydrating, you know, drinking clean filtered water and um, plenty of it, moving. <laughs> Our bodies are made to move, and they love it sleeping, getting enough adequate quality sleep, um, finding ways to release stress, finding ways to share nice thoughts with each other, <laughs> accepting compliments, praise, appreciation, showing ourselves some appreciation, taking care of what we're feeding our minds. What are we letting in? Does it feel good or not? Taking time out to do things like meditating, breathing, getting out in nature, going for walks, <laughs> yoga, pilates, running, biking, working out, whatever it is that works for you. Just doing nothing is a really, really powerful form of self-care and one that we do not actually give enough priority um, these days. There is starting to be more and more research showing that just doing nothing is immensely beneficial. Playing and having fun, connecting with people that we love is one of the most beneficial things we can do for our well-being spending time with people we care about, taking a nap. Yes, it is perfectly okay to take a nap, <laughs> even in the middle of the day if you have the opportunity and you feel the need to. Power naps can be hugely beneficial. Just sitting and staring out the window is a form of self-care and also good for your business. And, oh, I could go on and on. That gives you a flavor. If we think broadly, there are actually so many things that we can easily do, and many of them don't take a lot of time at all. The main thing here is find what feels good to you, because that is a steer and indication of what is going to be caring, nourishing, and nurturing to you. And I just want to say, in terms of the science around well-being, what helps us to flourish as humans, as well as in our activities and roles and our businesses as parents and so on, there are many strategies that can boost our well-being. And we do not need to, we certainly don't want to limit ourselves. And all of the kinds of things I've just listed, they will all feed into the business case um, benefits that I'm about to go through with you. Cool. So hopefully I've got your creative juices flowing a little bit um, and generating some ideas that you can use to add a little bit more self-care into your day. But let's look at the why, right? The why for this. What is the business case for the self-care? So. I'm really going to go over five key benefits of prioritizing self-care. Um, and I'll try to go over them fairly quickly. But all of this stuff is back. I'm, I totally geek out on 
what is it that helps us to flourish as human beings and really dive into our potential and for at least the last decade I, I just obsess about reading all the latest stuff on it so I'm just going to share with you some of the highlights and some of the tidbits Number one reason, we talk about productivity a lot. And actually, many, many, many of my clients, when we start working together, one of the biggest challenges is, I just don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. I need to find a way to work smarter and, and to get my time back. Um, we've all got the same amount of time. We all know that. It's been said again and again and again. It's not about the amount of time we have. It's about how we utilize our focus and our energy. And, um, and a lot of people use this word productivity for that. To me, that really is about our ability to accomplish what we want to accomplish with ease and with flow and in less time and without that feeling of we're just banging our head against a wall. You probably know what I mean when we get to that point where it's just like trying to get blood out of a stone, getting our head, our brain to work, getting the ideas you know getting to the end point of the task <laughs> it's not a nice place to be and it's really not good for your business or your clients or your kids um, so we want to avoid that so when we're neglecting our self-care when we're not doing things to look after our physical emotional mental and energetic selves our productivity goes down absolutely 100 percent we lose our ability to manage our focus in fact our ability to focus goes down which leaves us much much more susceptible to all of the many many distractions that are in our world today so we can lose a huge amount of time on things that do nothing to move us forward and actually sap our energy and our focus because we have less control over where our attention is going Another thing that can come in when we're not looking after our self-care, when we're not nurturing ourselves, is we become much more susceptible to making errors. And I'm going to talk about some specific areas of self-care in relation to that because um, you know, these insights I think are quite valuable. Sleep, getting sufficient quality sleep and looking after both ends of our sleep, uh, what we're doing as we wind down to sleep and what we do when we wake up in the morning, um, does affect the quality of our sleep. And there is research out there that's showing that even moderate sleep deprivation will impact our cognitive ability, our ability to think clearly and to avoid making errors. And the impact can be equivalent to legal alcohol limits. So when we are stretching things and trying to fit all of our work in, in the evenings, working late, getting up early, all of that kind of thing, we are actually trying to run our businesses and our lives and our families from a place as if we'd been continually having a few wines <laughs> or whatever it is. We are cognitively impaired. Do we want to be running our businesses and showing up as a parent in that state? And I know it can be so hard to actually feel that we can do something about it, but there are little things we can do bit by bit to help us at least chip away and improve the quality of our sleep. Nutrition is another is another biggie, and I know you know this, but just to add to the business case, giving our body and our brain good nutrition um, means not only that we have the energy to focus and think well, but it's about giving ourselves the nutrients to maintain that energy and the nutrients that our brains need to be able to operate effectively. And so there are some really simple things. I mean, we all know about the evils of sugar, but um, that sounded very dramatic, didn't it? <laughs> but I mean, sugar, things with a high, what we call a high GI, a high, high glucosemic index, um, that our body processes relatively quickly will give us energy spikes so that we have an energy boost and then we have a low and then we have an energy boost and then we have a low so if you have that kind of stuff going on it does make it very hard for us to focus in our business and you'll know it it's not a, it's not a fun place to be actually and often that's to do you know there can be other things going on but often the first place for us to look is what am i what am i feeding my body and my brain we forget that we're feeding our brain as well. And also the kind of food that we eat actually affects our mood. Um, so this is where we, you know, the basics of good nutrition and eating unprocessed food and plenty of um, vegetables and our daily five and all of that kind of stuff comes in. Movement, 
really important. What does movement do? Well, baseline, when we move our bodies, it increases our blood flow. When we increase our blood flow, we're increasing the blood going into our brain and carrying oxygen and nutrients to our brain and letting it do the work that it needs to do. So if we go, oh, I've got a deadline and I have to sit at my desk until I get that deadline done, I can't move we're actually impeding our brain's ability to do what we want it to do. And then we end up banging our head against that wall I was talking about. Hydration, again, water is really important. Did you know that around 80% of our brain, of the weight of our brain, is water? Water is such an important part of our brain and our body. So staying hydrated, drinking clean filtered water is such a simple thing we can do to really boost our effectiveness and our productivity. Um, little things, right? And there's a ton of other things that can uh, that are in that self-care basket that help us boost productivity. It's been shown that being out in nature around green stuff if, if we go out in nature for a while, say go for a walk, uh, for, even for an hour or so, it'll boost our IQ for a period of time after that so that we're better able to think clearly and problem solve and all of that stuff. Sunlight, just getting out in natural light, stimulates our circadian rhythms, which are the rhythms that regulate our wake sleep cycle and so help us be awake when we want to be awake and help us get better sleep. Um, and giving ourselves distraction-free time, the gift of distraction-free time so that we can be absorbed in the task that we're doing, um, that also boosts our well-being. It's also a form of self-care, and it can help us get into that state of flow when we can accomplish things with more ease. So self-care, massive, massive benefits for productivity, but the business case doesn't stop there. And I know I'm covering a lot. So again, drop notes, <laughs> drop the comment notes in the comments if you're going, whoa, this is a lot, I want to be able to absorb it later. Um, so point number one, self-care benefits your productivity. Very strong case there. Point number two, creativity and innovation. Um, when we are in go, go, go all the time, going through the to-do list, having to think through things, planning and doing and active and, and, and getting really into action mode, we get ourselves into a state of consciousness. Our brain is in a state of consciousness called the beta state. And, and that's basically the um, frequency at which our brain waves are oscillating. When we are in that state, it actually cuts off our access to the deeper parts of our consciousness and the deeper parts of our subconscious and our intuitive knowing. When we go, go, go and thinking all the time, we cannot access a lot of the intelligence that's available to us because we're in this beta state of consciousness. Now, it can be a productive mode. We can get things done and all of that. But if we do not take time to slow down, then there's basically a huge resource that we're cutting off our access to. I mean, think about it. Think about when you get your best ideas. Think about the the the. the those times when you've just had a creative insight, an aha moment, a solution has come to you that you wouldn't otherwise have thought of. And I just ask you, where were you and what are you doing? Because when you think about that, you'll find that most, if not all of the time, you were not in that doing working mode. You might have been driving. You might even have been on a holiday. You might have been just staring out the window doing nothing <laughs> or engaged in an activity that you just enjoy that fills your soul that's that's fun that's playful right that is when we are more connected um to our whole mind and to our full mental resources um so if we are in go doing an action mode all the time and not giving us that self-care, not giving ourselves that downtime, we are cutting ourselves off from that resource and it reduces our ability to innovate in our lives, in our businesses. It reduces our access to solutions. It reduces our ability to be creative. Engaging in our self-care, it's kind of like pulling the cord that opens up the parachute of our mind. You might have heard that metaphor. Um, our mind is like a parachute. It operates best when it's open so that we can see solutions, innovative ideas, be open to possibilities, see different perspectives. So creativity and innovation is number two on our list of five reasons. And another thing to bear in mind too is that when we're in that action mode, doing, 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 in that beta state of consciousness, we often simply don't hear the voice of intuition, the voice of our subconscious mind, the voice of our energetic self when it's offering up creative suggestions or even giving us a heads up, a little warning sign, 
right? We'll often miss those. And you may have had that experience, you know, that, that, can, that can lead to errors, to mistakes, to missed opportunities and so on. So we want to be able to be open to that inner awareness because it's, it's, one of, it's a really powerful asset for you in your business as well as in the rest of your life. Number three, and this one won't surprise you to, to see this on the list, stress reduction. We know stress is a killer. And organizations that have organizations wellness and well, organizational wellness and well-being policies, you know, the, the, the business case for that will be built on, um, the main thing that that will be built on is often reducing sick days. <laughs> because when we're stressed, one of the things that happens when we are in stress is that it shuts down our immune system. Do we want to have our immune system shut down right now with everything going on in the world? I'd suggest not, right? But our immune system gets dampened down when we are in, in, in stress mode. When we're in stress mode, we're much more likely to get sick. And if you're sick, especially if you're the only person running your business, can you afford to get sick? Probably not, right? And certainly it's not something that we want. But there's more to it than that because um, the stress response also exaggerates the effects I've just been talking about. When we think about it, and you've probably heard about this, but the, the stress response is something that we evolved so that we could survive in life and death situations. And so the stress response is an amazing and very fast acting response that puts all of our resources towards the things that we'd need in order to survive in a short term life and death kind of situation where we need to fight, freeze or run really fast to get out of a situation. What happens when we go into that response is resources are taken away from the parts of our brain that allow us to be creative, that allow us to plan, to think, to look at different options, because that's not really conducive to survival when we need to make really quick life and death decisions. So while stress is a, is a killer in terms of shutting down our immunity, it also can kill our businesses by shutting down all of our access to most of our resources. What happens when we're in stress is instead of actually using a, the executive part of our brain, the, abil the ability to plan, the ability to weigh up pros and cons, the ability to foresee consequences of our actions, we don't have access to that. What we're operating on instead is our survival emotions. And, and, and usually we go back to really old patterns of behavior that maybe having have nothing to do with the situation that you're in right now. We're not able to operate from a big picture perspective and we're much more likely to make bad decisions <laughs> because we're deciding from the wrong part of our brain, right? We cannot see the consequences often of our actions. Um, so, yeah, it, it just exaggerates what I was talking about in points one and two largely as well. So that's stress. Now, self-care obviously reduces stress reduction. Um, even when we're in chronic stress, one of the um, chemicals of stress you'll have heard of is cortisol. What's the, what's the best way to get rid of cortisol? Use it for what it's intended for. Cortisol is intended to help us fight, run, movement, exercise. <laughs> if you're feeling stressed, is a great way to get out of it. But there are many other things too that can help us reduce our stress, like the doing nothing, the getting out in nature, the meditating, even just breathing deeply helps us dial out of stress because it's saying to our body, you're safe. So there are many, many simple self-care things that we can do to dial down that stress. Emotional contagion is a really interesting one. Emotional contagion, you say, hey, what? Yes, emotions are contagious. You must have noticed this, right? Someone walks into a room and you immediately know they've had a bad day. You don't even need to see them. You can just feel it. That's emotional contagion. And it also happens online. You probably won't be surprised to hear that as well. There have been studies done. Emotional contagion is recognizing that our emotions are not just constrained within the confines of our physical body. Our emotions are picked up by people around us, whether they're negative emotions or whether they're positive emotions, right? Um, we can actually measure the energy of our emotions several meters beyond the confines of our body and it also comes through in how we show up our body language our energy the language that we use our words and so on so and, and that impacts other people so the question is in your business do you want to be a magnet for people or do you want to repel people because the emotional state that you bring to your business has a direct impact on that 
And of course, it's the same with the other people in our lives, within our families and so on. So emotional contagion is a real thing. Do you want to be a positive contagion? Or do you want to be a negative contagion? It's your choice. How do we impact that? Well, again, it starts with self-care. It starts with self-care. We have to be able to show ourselves positive appreciation, love, and care before we can bring that positive emotion and express it to the rest of the world. And again, it starts with practicing what feels good to you so that that is what you're putting out there. Um, and number five, won't surprise you, better connections. It's been said so many times that in today's world, business is all about relationships. In your business, I'm sure if you think about it, one of the greatest assets in your business is your relationships, your relationships with clients, your relationships with potential partners and collaborators, um, your, the relationships that you build with potential leads, with suppliers and on and on, right? So relationships are a really core part of our business. And obviously, if we're talking about family, kids, parenting, all of that side of things too, relationships, right? Right. When we're operating from a place of resourcefulness, when we're looking after ourselves and keeping keeping our cup full, as we say, and we're operating from that state, we're, we're connected with our full mind, our full brain, the parachute of our mind is open, um, it significantly improves our ability to connect with others. And there's a few things that go on here. One, obviously, is that emotional contagion thing I was just talking about. Another one is that when we are in that open, relaxed state, we pick up so much more of what is going on with other people. It improves our ability to be empathetic, to notice little subtle tells, behaviors, things that are going on, to be curious without being, th being um, threatened or anything like that, um, and to help others feel safe so we're better able to build that rapport that enables us to have good relationships with others uh, another thing to bear in mind too is um <laughs> this incredibly politically incorrect thing called the seven second rule and i think it might even be few, be less than seven seconds now but this is this rule that, that people when people first connect with us you know people unconsciously this is not a conscious thing but unconsciously there is a judgment that happens Within at most seven seconds of someone seeing you or hearing you or connecting with you. And that judgment will be, you know, is this person a yes or a no, basically? It's, it's that simple. Is this someone I, I, I want to connect with or not? That's going to be a subconscious decision. And that decision is made on the way that you show up the way that people perceive you. And it does come down, I'm sorry, <laughs> this is very politically incorrect, but it does come down to are you exuding energy and the physical characteristics of well-being, of good health, um, positive energy, good posture, all of that kind of stuff? We respond to that. So looking after those things will help us in our business. And if you think about it, think about people and how you respond to people when you very first see them. Um, if you allow yourself just to stand back objectively, you might notice that. So there's a lot of stuff there, but I wanted to give you some really good, solid reasons why your self-care is a vital foundation for the health of your business, not just for your health. Um, giving consistent attention to your self-care will help you to accomplish what you want to accomplish each day with more ease, with more flow, in less time, with fewer errands. It'll help you to be able to better access your creative and your innovative self so that you can generate creative ideas, find solutions, think outside the box to benefit your business, your clients, to help you have the impact you want to have in the world. It's going to help you to make better decisions, operating from the full resources of your mind, from a place of coherence. Obviously, less downtime from being sick because you're looking after your immune system and your body and you're able to bring healthy energy to your life. And we put out that more positive emotional signal. So we're utilizing emotional contagion to improve the lives of others and also to attract, to become a magnet, if you like, for the types of people that we want to be working with in our businesses. And you're able to form better, more rewarding connections with the people that you interact with. And of course, all of this plays into family life as well.
Um, I'll come to that in a moment. First, I want to share you a story because I promised that I'd share with you an example of how this directly affects the bottom line in dollar terms. And it's a personal story. When I first started my business, I started my business because I completely burned out in my career when my kids were little and you know that whole overwhelm thing. So I retrained and decided to start my own business as an entrepreneur and as a coach. And I dived into the how-to system and really applied myself and went full on trying to do all of the stuff. And it was like banging my head against a brick wall. And I got to a point where I just threw the towel in. <laughs> I really had a little mini tantrum and I threw the towel in and I went, I'm just going to dial it down for a bit. I need to put my self-care first. Um, and I was, I was coaching a few clients and doing a few things, but I actually really dialed down the time and focus I put onto my business. And I started focusing on my self-care and building some practices and some routines, movement, making some good food decisions, meditating regularly, that kind of stuff. Not massive, but, you know, um, that was where my primary focus was. And at the time, I just kind of detached. I went, yeah, this is where I need to put my energy. I'm not too concerned about business results for now. I'll come back to it once I've built back my health and well-being. Out of the blue, I get a phone call from a business contact. We'd like to take you out for lunch. I'm like, oh, that's nice. Lunch sounds good. So we go out to lunch and we have a lovely conversation. We connect. We're open-minded. <laughs> We're focused on, um, you know, all of those things that I was just talking about, the emotional contagion, the connection, the building, you know, operating from that coherent place of awareness. I walked away from that lunch with $15,000 worth of business because I did nothing. I looked after my health. I relaxed and chilled out. And I showed up from that place of taking care of the foundation, my self-care. So that I'm sharing with you just simply so that you can see there is a direct correlation between your self-care and your financial results in your business, right? And especially if you want sustainable financial results. And we all know that the hustle can deliver results, but it's not sustainable. Um, and doesn't impact well on our family. Let's talk a little bit about family because if you're here, you're a parent as well and your family is important and we've got, this. it's all very well doing this stuff for business, but I want to be a good parent as well. So a few things to bear in mind, right? Our kids, particularly when they're young, but even as they grow older, it's, it's, it's kind of that leadership thing. Have, have you ever heard the saying that as a leader, um, we've got to walk the talk because people do what we do, they don't do what we say. Have you noticed it's the same with kids? So they will model and learn from the habits that they see us, and you know this as a parent, right? How we show up in each day, we see our kids reflecting it back. So thinking about what we want to model to them, what kind of lifestyle do we want them to be naturally flowing into as they become adults? a lifestyle of hard work and toil and struggle, <laughs> or a lifestyle of easily living to self-care habits that support them and enable them to fully fully be the human that they are. It starts not by what we tell them, not by what we try to make them do, but what we model to them. Um, and our kids pick up emotions too, especially younger kids. Um, and we're seeing this, I think, a lot more... Uh, Maybe it's just in my mind, but a lot more these days than maybe we noticed in the past. Kids are very, very susceptible to emotions. They will pick up on, on our emotions. They might not understand them, but the, the, our emotions will kind of become embodied into their nervous system if we're not careful. And I, I have to say, I've absolutely noticed that with my kids um, and, and with others as well. The emotional contagion is particularly strong with our families. So if we want to do our best for, as, as a parent for our children and help them to be resilient to stress, it starts with us, right? Um, and of course, quality time. If we're not looking after our self-care so we struggle to be present, how can we be present with our kids so that they know that, that they are important to us and so that they feel that security and that love that helps them to have the fuel they need to be able to navigate life? So there you go. If you need a powerful why <laughs> to be able to actually give yourself that permission slip to put your self-care first, I hope I've shared it with you. Um, I would just like to pause. I know I've shared a huge amount of stuff 
I tend to um, really geek out, as I said, on um, these issues. So hopefully you've gained some insights or a little aha or some um, additional thing that you can put on your list of, of whys for, for your powerful why, why you want to invest in your self-care. I invite you right now just to take a moment, drop a comment in the chat to uh, share what is it that you've gained so far? What's a little aha? What's something that you're going, hmm, oh, that's something that I'm going to apply or maybe share with someone that you know who could benefit. I just want to move on now as well because I promised that I would share with you my, my simple formula. What, uh, uh, uh. I call it the five W's. And this is based on research on how we form habits, right? If we're trying to make ourselves do stuff and never lasts, have you noticed that? If we're trying to use willpower or make ourselves make a change, phew, there are just too many pressures operating against it. If we really want lasting change, we want to create a habit. Um, that is a routine or a behavior that we just naturally do without really having to think consciously about it. And that we notice if we haven't done it, we kind of like brushing your teeth, right? If you don't brush your teeth, most of us will go, mm oh, there's something wrong. I really need to go back and brush my teeth. That's a habit. So we want to be able to bring that power to our self-care. So I'm going to share with you a simple, simple five W's formula. The five w W's is what it sounds like. There are five W's, the five W's method. What, why, when, where, and who. And I'm just going to walk through that brief, briefly briefly with you. So the first thing in the five W's method is asking yourself, what is it that I'm going to do? What is the new behavior that I want to do to bring a little bit more self-care into my day? So there's a couple of things about the what. Be specific about it, right? Um, what exactly is the behavior? Is it that when I get up first thing in the morning, I am going to go and stand outside and allow some natural light to help me wake up? Is it going to be that simply when I wake up in the morning, I'm going to put my feet on the floor and say to myself, today is a good day, looking after my emotional self. Maybe it's having a glass of water first thing when we wake up to boost the system and rehydrate. It can be really, 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 really small. In fact, small steps are the best kind because we can turn, it, it takes much, much, much less time. And there's research to show this. Small, easy changes take less willpower and become habits much, much more quickly than more challenging changes. So the smaller, the better, because then you get the habit locked in and you can then expand on it. Like a tree root that eventually breaks concrete. It starts out really small and then it grows. So the what? And if you're interested in that, by the way, James Clear's book, Atomic Habits, has some really good stuff on this. An atomic, an atomic habit is, like an atom, really, really small, really, really powerful. So decide what it is that you're going to do. Make it really small. Um, the second aspect of the five W's method is the why, right? And I've talked about the why. <laughs> We've got to have a powerful why. We want to be motivated because if we're not motivated to make the change, that inner voice will talk us out of it. And, you know, well, the first time we fall off the wagon, it'll be, oh, it's just too hard. We, we need to have that powerful why, a really, really good, solid reason to keep doing it. Why? Is this change to your daily routine important to you? Why does it feel so good? What are the benefits going to be for you, for your family, for your business, for the people around you, for your body, for your spouse? You know, be really, really creative with the why and think up all of the reasons why this change is exciting for you and why once it becomes a habit, your life is going to be better and the impact you have on other people's lives is going to be stronger really go overboard with it <laughs> because there are always days you know we go oh we fall off we, we fall off the wagon as I said and we want to be able to go back to that why there's also another reason though which comes back to how we form habits and that is why is this going to feel good to me in the moment when I do it and once I've accomplished it because that is what really cements us in what is the reward to me and to my brain for actually doing this. Why does it feel good? We want to be really clear about that as well and to acknowledge that why every time we do the behavior because that really is the glue that helps us turn it into a habit. Our brain likes to be rewarded, right? Just like, just like a lovely little puppy dog. 
<laughs> or, or like a child with a sticker chart. <laughs> so we need to have that really powerful why and understand what is the benefit. What's the benefit to me? What is the benefit to my brain? Okay, so that's the, the second part of the five W's. The third one is when. The clearer we are about when we're going to do something in our day, the better. Because we want to actually, um, I call this pre-paving. We want to be able to rehearse it. We want to be able to know when exactly in our day we're going to do this thing. So that it slots into our existing patterns. So the when, it can be at a certain time of the day, when it's 1 o'clock, when it's 12 o'clock. It can be when we're in a certain place or with certain people. What I find for self-care habits can be the most powerful is actually attaching the new behavior to something that is already an established part of your routine. So immediately after I've brushed my teeth, I will. Immediately once I get out of bed, I will. Just before I go to sleep, I will. Just before I've had dinner, I will. It's that kind of thing. So we're attaching the new behavior to something that we're already doing without even thinking about it. That makes it much, much easier for us to turn it into a habit. Um, so that's the win. Number four is where. And again, this is about pre-paving. It's about rehearsing in our brain so that our brain knows exactly what's going on. The more we can tell our brain, basically, that it's already done. <laughs> this is what it looks like. This is where we are. <laughs> this is when we're doing it. This is how it feels. This is why it feels good. And the more we can run that through our brain before actually doing it, the more in tune our brain is, and it'll be easy, easier for us to do. That's the principle. So being clear about where. When I'm doing this new habit, where am I going to be? Am I going to be outside, inside? Which room? Am I going to be at home or somewhere else? What room in the house am I going to be in? The clearer we can be about that, the easier it is for us. And I can see um, we've still got a couple of people um, here joining me, so it's fantastic to have you on board. And do feel please very welcome to drop in the chat uh, any ahas that you've had from this so far. And I will move on to the last part of the 5Ws method which is da, 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 who. There's two dimensions to who. So it might be that this new practice is something that you're doing with someone else. Maybe um, first thing in the morning, I'm going for a walk with my partner or my kid or my dog. Um, it may be that I decide to have an exercise buddy. Um, it might be something along those lines. But a really important part of the who is who is going to help you stay on track. Who can you tell and share this new behavior with so that they can help you just through that first phase of getting it into your routine, help you to remember, help you to actually do it, help you to celebrate that you've done it. Uh, that is a really, really important part of staying on track with all of this. So that's the five W's method. Ta -da! I encourage you to actually play with it. Play with it right now. Think, what is one really small enhancement I'd like to make to my daily routine to boost my self-care so that I can start and, you know, uh, enjoying even more of those benefits that Anna's talked about? What's one small thing I want to add? What is it? Why do I want to do it? When am I going to do it in my routine? Where will I be when I do it? And who will help me stay on track? And actually make the decision to do it to start within the next 24 hours. Make it really, really easy. So there's no reason not to start within the next 24 hours. If you're up for that, if you're up to actually making a tiny beneficial upgrade to your self-care today, within the next 24 hours, drop to side in the chat. Make that commitment to yourself and create that little new habit. And then you can expand on it and expand on it and expand on it because we all have so much potential and once we get into this pattern of gradually expanding our self-care we find our ability to access our potential grows as well go figure right so one other thing that i would suggest to you is be kind to yourself acknowledge yourself really reward yourself every single time you do something towards your self-care give yourself as some kind of reward and in fact actually decide that for yourself now when I do this new behavior how will I reward myself it does not need to be big sometimes the most powerful rewards for ourselves 
are acknowledging ourselves, giving ourselves a pat on the back, on the back, celebrating, just taking a moment to pause and go, I did it. Right? Really appreciating ourselves for taking that step. All right, so those are the key things that I wanted to cover with you today. And I hope that this has um, been helpful for you. So again, drop a little aha, something that you've gained in the chat so that we know. I want to ask you, are you feeling a bit more motivated after everything we've gone over today? Are you feeling a bit motivated to make that change, to boost your self-care, to really stay focused on this? If so, drop self-care matters in the chat. Um, and as I said before, I know we've covered a lot. I really tend to pack stuff into these um, into these lives. So I'm just going to do a quick recap, actually, just, just as a reminder of everything that we've covered today. All right. And um, a reminder, too, that I'm very, very happy to share with you the notes so that you can refer back as often as you want to to what we've covered in this call drop notes in the chat and i will send you a um, a direct message with a link so that you can access those but look let's do a quick recap all right what have we covered today well to start with too many of us especially if we're mums running a business and looking after kids and all of that kind of stuff our self-care generally tends to drop off the bottom of what feels like an infinitely long to-do list. And I know it's not just for, for those of us who are running businesses, whether we're working, doing other things, there's just so much coming into our lives today. We tend to put everything else, work, business, clients, kids, chores, family, etc., 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 first and leave our self-care off. And often we feel guilty even just taking a few minutes for ourselves. Well, today I hope I've turned that pattern around for you because we have talked about just a scratching the surface of why your self-care is actually the most important investment you can make in your business for your family and obviously for you. <laughs> obviously it's good for you as well. There is a big return on investment. I shared my personal story of getting taken out for lunch after putting my self-care first having a lovely meal and walking away with $15,000 worth of business. Really lovely thing. All because I dialed down and dialed up my self-care. So this really does directly come to your bottom line. We've talked about five reasons why self-care directly impacts your business. Productivity, your ability to be creative and innovative, um, your ability to reduce and handle stress so that you're in a better space to make good decisions in your business and also so that you know you're, you're looking after your immune system you're able to show up more in your business and, and consistently as well we've talked about that emotional contagion effect and how um, when we look after our self-care it actually affects that magnetism versus repellent <laughs> um, vibe of our emotions. Uh, that is a real thing. And we also talked about um, our ability to build better relationships and connections, build rapport, better connect with others better when we're prioritizing our self-care. Business is all about the quality of our relationships. And the place to start with that is looking after ourselves. And of course, that's true or our families as well, so much so. And our families learn from us as a role model. So we rounded all of that off with the five-step formula, the five Ws, being really clear about what the change is going to is that you want to make to your self-care, making it really, really, really small and easy, being clear about why it's important to you and what that reward is for you and your brain when you do it, when you're going to do it, where you're going to do it, and who is going to help you be accountable. All right. That's it for today. Anna McKinley, helping entrepreneurial mums to create rewarding self-care routines so that you have a strong foundation to thrive in your business as a parent and in your life. I will just say a couple of things. I know we've covered a lot and it's overwhelming. If, you're, if you've got health goals and you've been finding that you're struggling a bit to stay motivated towards them, there are a number of patterns five key patterns actually that I see again and again that impact on our motivation. If you'd like to know a little bit more about that, then uh, I've actually got a quiz that you can take. It takes about five minutes and will um, help you to understand what your health goal motivation killer is, what, what might be keeping you back. 
awareness is power, right? So I invite you to go to the link um, bit.ly forward slash health dash motivation dash quiz. You're welcome to take that quiz. It's free and I'll directly send you a free PDF report about your primary motivation killer and some of the things you can do about it. So feel free to go ahead and do that. And look, if you feel that you need extra support, just drop me a DM. We can get on a call. We can talk about what's going on for you and I can give you some suggestions and support. So if you need it, book a call. All right. Anyway, I want to thank you so much for those who've joined me live. Wonderful to have you here. For those of you who are engaging in the replay, great that you could come along as well. And that's me. Remember, your self-care matters. Taking care of yourself and your, um, and your health and well-being is the foundation on which everything else is built. So until the next time we speak, I'm wishing you and yours all the best. All the best for your well-being, all the best in your life, and we'll talk soon. Thanks so much again for joining me, and I'll say bye for now.